All of music can be explained by standing waves. So this is a really important physics topic. I'd like to uh, demonstrate to you that these different lengths of pipe make different sounds. So, these pipes of different length make different sounds because different standing waves are possible on those pipes. This is a, a special set of circumstances because the pipes uh, the wave is not existing inside the pipe, it's existing as the pipe. The pipe itself is waving. So <clears throat> sometimes though you can have, for instance, in an organ, you can have a standing wave that's in the air inside the pipe. So we'll talk about all these general types of standing waves, but first we should define a standing wave uh, like this. A standing wave doesn't appear to move. So that means it is waving without moving. If I were to just do a quick sketch, I think it's really important to start with a, a quick sketch here. The idea of a very, very simple standing wave, might, you might see a full wave here, and then a moment later, this is gonna be time this direction, a moment later you'd see less pronounced of a wave, and then uh, let, let me give you an equilibrium point here. This is equilibrium, equilibrium, and we'll set it up again and give you an equilibrium. And I'll argue in this time that the wave is gone. Oh shoot, it didn't move, but it's gone. That's kind of funky. A little bit later, we've got an equilibrium point and now the wave has begun to invert. And then slightly later than that, the wave has fully inverted, and you see the exact opposite of what it was before. So if you consider the points on this wave, this is a, um, this is a rope, what I've drawn right here, but it goes for everything that has a standing wave on it. This section of wave right here, this section of rope, is moving a lot, and this section of rope is moving a lot because it's up, then it's small, then it's zero, then it's negative, and then it's really negative. So this section moves a whole bunch, and then I guess it's gonna repeat the whole process going back the other direction, but we don't have to, we don't have to continue that. That's the idea of a standing wave, and there's probably some damping because sound eventually goes away. You hear it for a while and then it's gone. But it's definitely shaking back and forth several times. It's not critically damped or over damped. It's definitely under damped. Um, and this location also is experiencing a lot of motion. But now I want you to consider this location right here in the center. What's happening to the rope right there? Absolutely nothing. And do you notice the same thing right here? Nothing is happening to the rope at that end, and similarly, nothing's happening to the rope at that end. These green circles I'm gonna call anti, nope, nope. These green circles I'm gonna call nodes because they are node moving. Nodes, N-O-D-E-S. And these, um, what are they, purple? These purple circles I'm going to call anti-nodes, because they're the opposite of node moving. They are moving very much. Anti-nodes. So, do you want me to go into uh, the, the motion of air pressure in a pipe and make the analogy with that first? I think I probably should do that. So, I wanna take, for instance, a typical, <sighs> let's make it, oh no. Oh my goodness, there's so much more that we should do. I don't really know which way to go now. Now let's say that, uh, okay, we've got, uh, we've got nodes and anti-nodes defined, but let's say that instead I've got a tube of air and I've closed that tube of air at both ends. So I'm going to shade it in right here and crosshatch this on the other side. It is a, I, never mind whether we could actually hear this sound or not, but, um, this would be a tube closed at both ends. I want to make an exact analogy. I want to make an exact analogy to this system right here where we've got a fixed end at this side and a fixed end at this side. The boundary conditions are such that we could get standing waves in here. So the tube closed at both ends is going to have a wave that acts similar to this. And the way I would draw this, if I were to summarize all of these pictures in one, it would look kind of like this. It would be up, 
And then I could also do a dotted line here, and uh, or maybe I could even just shade it in right here and say that it's doing this kind of a wave. Would you agree that this is a whole wave? We're seeing it go up and then back and then down and then back. So this is an entire wave, it's one wavelength. So this kind of a structure would also be possible in here. And I'll just draw it here and then talk about what my lines mean, because they don't have the same meaning. There is no rope in here. But what I'm saying is, well, a sound wave is differences in pressure, right? So what I'm saying is this node, what is my color for nodes? This node right here means that the pressure is not changing. And similarly for the end, how could the pressure change? How could the air molecules move? How could the air molecules move at the end right here? And uh, here's another node. That's a node, that's a node, that's a node. But in the middle, oh shoot, in the middle, these air molecules in here are getting sloshed back and forth really, really, really dramatically. These air molecules are sloshing back and forth, and so that's an anti-node for the air. And what did I choose to use for anti-node? This color over here, it's actually called primrose. <laughs> this is the location, these locations are anti-nodes. And that means that the pressure is changing really dramatically here, and the air is going to the left, and then to the right, and then to the left, and then to the right. But at these nodes, there's actually perfectly still air you could have a piece of paper there, even. You could even, heck, put an end right there, another flat end. But the only difference with a pipe, with a tube of air, as opposed to a rope, oh shoot, there are no differences at all. But we need to discuss an open end. What if open end, right? That's the big question. So here I'll draw a tube that has an open end and comes back and the other end will be closed. I'll make this the closed end here. What if open end there? That's our question. So we're going to have to have a node over here still, right? We have to have a node over here, but at an open end, we can't have a node because otherwise, how would the wave exist? This is kind of like an open end where you'd put the rope on a ring and have it go up and down. So I'm going to move up just a little bit and discuss that idea first because I think ropes are a little bit more concrete than a column of air. So I'll give you a uh, uh, yeah, I'll give you a rope and I'll say that this end is free to move. And you know when waves are reflected from ends that are free to move, interesting things happen. In fact, it doesn't say still, ever. And so it goes up and down. So I've got a fixed end over here and an open end over here, and I'm gonna be going up and then down and then in. Oh, that was kind of a sloppy picture. Let's just throw that whole thing away. That was so bad. All right, I've got two ends and this end is open. So I've got to go up and then down and here with a ring or down and then up and then here with a ring. On an open end, I have to have an anti-node. On a closed end, I have to have a node. So let me stick with these consistent colors. I've got a node here on a closed end, and I've got an anti-node in primrose over here on the open end. This is generally the case. I'm gonna say closed ends beget nodes, open ends beget antinodes. We'll put some exclamation points there. Get some more exclamation points going here. Okay, good. So now you've got an idea of what's going on. Newton is impressed. He wants you to continue and use what you've learned. Let us now consider what lengths of wave can exist on various systems. We're going to start by analyzing the system. Well, let's take a break and make it a separate video.